Hey everyone, so Rocking Mystery made a video, uh, I believe it was called Pathological Altruism, where he discusses altruism and I guess what he considers warped or extremist forms of altruism that are actually counterproductive, um, where the individuals that are being cared for basically suffer as a consequence of becoming codependent and the giver suffers as a consequence of sacrificing themselves um, and their property. And so uh, Rocking Mystery suggests that this is what goes on a lot of the time. Um, and we had a comment exchange, you should go check out his video and then you can check out our comments as well, um, back and forth to each other. Um, so, but I wanted to just, I'm basically just going to be summing up my comments and that's just because I want my position out there on my channel because it's something I wanted to make a video about for a while anyways. And um, so first of all, I want to come at it from a slightly different point. Uh, so altruism, as is commonly defined, means good, doing good for other people with no prospect for any kind of personal recompense. So it's kind of the opposite of egotism. If you, you know, egotism doing something for personal gain with no real um, acknowledgement of or uh, attention paid to other people's benefit. Um, and I want to redefine that slightly. I want to take altruism in the Buddhist sense because, as I've mentioned before, I find Buddhism very inspiring. I mean, I call myself sometimes a non-metaphysical Buddhist, although I don't really necessarily buy into. You know, I just I just like having labels. I especially like Buddhism sometimes because it kind of gets under some atheist skin. Um, and I don't know. Sometimes I like riling people up, but it's all in good fun. I do it at the atheist group that I go to. Um, but getting back to the point, so what I want to actually change that definition to, the altruism definition, is from a Buddhist viewpoint, um, you're basically taught or instructed to see other people like you would see yourself and to recognize that while there are such things as constructive things and negative things that someone can act in, constructive ways and destructive ways. There's no such thing as good and evil. There's no real such thing as a good or a bad person. There's just a person that is, um, that's basically kind of malfunctioning and a person that's functioning well. And so you're encouraged to think of yourself in terms of the same way that you think of other people and to try to adopt different perspectives and so on. And so in, I, in the Buddhist definition of altruism, it can in fact be something that benefits you because you're looking at yourself as a person of equal worth and value to everyone else. In that concept, um, the idea that you would just sacrifice your own happiness completely for other people's um, doesn't apply because um, considering yourself as an equally valuable person, you should try to uh, achieve your own happiness and you shouldn't be sacrificing your happiness for the happiness of others but you should be making sure that happiness is kind of equally distributed so if you're doing very well then in that definition of altruism you should be uh, doing everything you can to help other people whereas if you're doing very poorly um, then you don't have to give the shirt off your back to help someone who's better off than you um, that's a slightly different definition. I mean, you can say the same thing by saying you need to have a balance between altruism and egotism or something like that. But I prefer this Buddhist-inspired um, concept because I really like the idea of valuing yourself and looking at yourself in the same light that you look at people that are external to your own head. Because really the only difference is you're trapped in here, they're trapped in those bodies, to me at least. Um, now, going back to the point of <sighs> extremist altruism. So already, if I have my definition of altruism, that kind of eliminates certain forms of altruism. That kind of eliminates wasting your happiness in your life completely unnecessarily for someone else's tiny gain. I mean, that seems intuitively counterproductive, and I would agree. But as for saying that other altruism necessarily like um, Rocking Mystery implies and uh, verified that's his opinion in comments, necessarily um, implies creating codependence and creating kind of destructive relationships. I reject that 
and I reject that because this is again it's a kind of a something that is taught in Buddhism not just in Buddhism but um, it's something that's emphasized heavily there there's a big difference between uh, you know you can be kind and you can be unkind and you can be wise and you can be stupid or naive and these are two kind of dimensions so if you're a wise person that's unkind you can do a lot of damage because you go around and you're very clever in uh, doing things that are wrong but which might benefit you in some way whereas if you're kind but you're really not very wise you're very naive about it then you can also do a lot of damage because you're trying to help people and like rocking mystery says you can you can say okay well we have some people there who are struggling i'll just make sure everything's provided for them um, you know, and then everything will be fine. And we see many examples of this that it's kind of in the welfare state, also in uh, kind of development aid where people come in with money and they just give everyone stuff. And that sometimes makes the situation worse because it destroys, for example, in the case of, um, of aid, it can destroy the local economy and basically create complete dependency, which is going to be even worse once that support kind of disintegrates. And in the meanwhile, it can actually leave people um, very unhappy because they're no longer what they can achieve is less than the aid so they just sit around doing nothing uh, but you can actually combine wisdom and altruism and then I in my view at least that falls away completely if you are a wise altruist then you understand that doing something good for someone doesn't necessarily involve doing what they want you to do or doing uh, whatever is you know the easy thing it doesn't necessarily mean throwing money at a problem if you want to help a drug user then the best thing may not be to buy them drugs um, if you understand that they're you know they're kind of trapped in that situation the best thing for them maybe um, to you know provide them some kind of withdrawal drug in a controlled environment to provide them with counseling to provide them with with uh, rehabilitation and then pr to provide them with a job all of these things might cost money so and you, you know maybe you'll never benefit from it so these are altruistic things but they're all things geared towards taking that person away from a dependency they're dependent on this drug substance but through this altruistic action and it's altruistic because it might cost money you might be able to take them away from that dependency um, in a way that either negligence nor um, naive altruism giving them whatever they want um, might not be able to do and if it sounds a little bit paternalistic um, obviously you need to always look at the situation but in situations where people are um, are addicted to things or are caught in a particular kind of place in life where uh, where they are they're kind of stuck sometimes I think it is justified when you're helping someone to shape that help in a way that will help them better rather than just giving them what they want um, so I mean and that's one example drug use um, you can also you know you can take many examples um, I did for a couple of years I went out and we did a we did a food ban for the homeless and what you see a lot on the street are two particular things the first thing is people that really do want to work um, but once you hit the streets it gets incredibly difficult to actually hold down work and why is that well it's because you can't really take a regular shower and you don't have good dental care or no dental care so a lot of people end up losing a lot of their teeth now these are two things that are you know they're not free to fix they do cost money but they are things that can be addressed and in that way you can actually give these people an opportunity to get a job whereas once they fit the street, they're there for a while. Um, it gets increasingly difficult. Now, another thing, obviously, you need to do is provide training, provide opportunities. Um, you know, you want to you want to try 
to not make people depend on a welfare state. That's great. But you will need to often provide them many other kinds of support along the way. And these are still altruistic actions. They're just altruistic actions which are better directed than the simplistic let's keep them alive by giving them some food and some shelter and some medical care. They're designed to actually help them um, kind of realize what they want to do with their own lives um, and to kind of show them again that they can actually be productive members of society. Um, and the second example, which I think is even more important of, of um, people who are on the streets, is mental illness. So there is a tremendous problem in Australia, as I'm sure in the rest of the world, of mentally ill people in jail and on the streets. Um, you know, in Australia, I think it's something, what was it, you know, something like half of people on the street or more have some form of fairly severe mental illness. Now, what that means is that they're usually unemployable. Um, you know, if, if you're schizophrenic and you can't afford the medication uh, and or the psychiatrist, psychologist to keep you on track, if you're struggling with severe depression and, you know, one out of every two months you're completely offline, you're not going to get work. Um, and you're not even, you know, some of these people literally cannot really take care of themselves at all. Um, and it's a very sad situation, and it's very sad that in Australia it's there's some efforts being made, but so far there was a real lack of support for those people. And so um, they just fall through the net. Now, again, you could take a kind of, you know, you could just say, well, we'll give them money and let them take care of it, um, but really, obviously, what you really want is a strategy that emphasizes uh, free mental health care and free medical care for these people. Because with the right drugs and the right treatment, many of them can make really significant improvements. Um, and I myself, as someone who has, um, has my own uh, issues, if you like, uh, you know, I, I understand that it gets too much. And again, this helping hand is not about, is not about just, just giving them some way of becoming dependent on you. It's about empowering them to actually take charge of their lives. And they need these things. They cannot, their brain does not work in the right way without these things for them to, uh, to, be able to hold down a job or even to be able to really stay housed because often they just won't be able to complete daily tasks without help. I mean, if you've ever seen like someone with a severe kind of schizophrenic episode, um, there's just nothing that they can do productively. And the same goes for jails. They're full of people with mental illness. And yes, any kind of altruism that helps these people um, any kind of productive, wise altruism, in my in my view, is a good thing. And obviously, Rocking Mystery and I very much disagree on taxation and the morality thereof, and the morality of property, and and so on and so forth. And I guess that's where uh, where people will have to find different solutions depending on what they think is an ethical approach to kind of fostering that kind of altruism. But I think it's quite easy to envisage, and we already have many altruistic projects that are in fact not simplistic and not counterproductive and do not create codependencies. But in fact, what they do is they help people overcome their dependencies and they help provide them the support that they need in order to run their own lives. And it's a, an amazing gift for someone. Obviously, if you don't want to be altruistic, usually this has such huge benefits for society that you, you can almost say it's not really even al altruism. But it is altruism um, if, at, if at the same time you're saying, well, whether even though I realize it's good for society, the real reason why we need to do this is because we can give these people back for not too much investment, um, a life and... Uh, and happiness 
Um, and so, you know, as I said, this video really the core message for me was about I can I can envisage many kinds of altruism that are not destructive, do not create codependencies. So what we need to do is we need to consider ourselves as a person when we're being altruistic and we need to take our own happiness into account. And then we need to perform our, our altruism wisely with the intent of making people, allowing people to overcome their dependencies, overcome any problems that they're having in their life which are stopping them from becoming um, kind of productive members of society and then we go from there and I mean we've had many many successes um, and you know I can I can dig up some success stories for you obviously and we've had successes when I was working for that group as well with people actually turning their lives around with the right kind of support but we can definitely do it and in my book as long as you practice your altruism wisely and you're a real egalitarian about it and you consider yourself as highly as anyone else um, then there really is no such thing as being too altruistic with those two safeguards in place in my view altruism is a good thing and a virtue that we should all foster and cultivate Church of Estee View, I'll see you guys all later.